Mr. Heller, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that uh, and appreciate my colleague for uh, accommodating. Well, okay. And uh, Secretary Wilkie, well, okay, thank you for being here today. And I also especially want to thank you for coming out to Las Vegas last week. Thanks, sir. I thought that was a, a great experience. Uh, and uh, in conversation through your nomination process, I asked you to try to get out to Las Vegas, spend some time before the end of the year. And just to have you there meant a lot to me. Uh, Thanks. It meant a lot to our veterans uh, in, in, uh, in the state. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, President and uh, Secretary uh, Wilkie came out to Las Vegas and signed uh, the appropriations for VA and the uh, military construction. I think it's the first time in history that uh, a president has gone to a facility, a VA facility, to actually sign the appropriations bill uh, for, for our veterans. And uh, it was uh, done with uh, great fanfare and interest, and uh, our veterans uh, very much uh, were supportive. And I want to thank you. Uh, for Thanks. taking that time. It was wonderful. Um, I did a, uh, like most of us here uh, on this panel, I do a round table, and I had a veterans round table in Reno, and you know, obviously a lot of important issues are raised. Uh, we talk about mental health, homeless veterans, um, veterans employment opportunities, and the gamut of uh, issues that are important uh, to our men and women. Um, but most of all, I heard about our Blue uh, Water Navy Vietnam veterans. And there's a gentleman uh, in Nevada uh, from Elko, his name is Joe, and uh, he is a Blue Water Navy veteran, and he's been diagnosed with terminal prostate cancer. Um, it's a disease that's associated with Agent, uh, Agent Orange, um, but he isn't eligible for compensation because he's a Blue Water Navy veteran. Um, my concern is I think we're turning our back on Joe. And before I go much further, I'd like to have you clarify your position on uh, on. Uh, compensation for our Blue Water Navy Vietnam veterans. Thanks, Senator. Let me, let me um, start from an emotional position. Um, I probably have experienced the effects of Vietnam in a way that um, few people my age could. Um, I was certainly didn't fight there, but I saw my father and his, his comrades fight there. Uh, my father was gravely wounded in, in Southeast Asia, and um, some of my uh, classmates' parents did not return. So I have an emotional attachment to the cause of Vietnam veterans uh, that I think is, is unique at this time. So I uh, have also said that I don't like the term greatest generation. Uh, I think that could have only been said by someone who has never put on a uniform because soldiers all have the same hopes, dreams, and fears. It doesn't matter what, uh, what era they fight in. So that is the emotional premise. Um, I agree with Chairman Isaacson. Uh, I want to make sure that we get it right, that we get it right for all of our veterans. Um, I pledge to, to work with the chairman. Uh, we've had many discussions. But I will say what is, I, I do want to make clear what is happening in VA. Um, there are about 40,000 Vietnam veterans across the country who served in the Navy who are eligible for VA benefits. So it is not as if, uh, Agent Orange type conditions, I should say. It's not as if the, the VA is turning people around. Uh, or turning, turning people out. We're going to continue to do that. Um, my pledge to the chairman is to work with the committee to ensure that we are just, we are equitable, equitable on both ends. Um, uh, I think the committee received a letter uh, from four of the largest uh, VSOs uh, supporting the legislation, but also saying we have a question about the funding mechanism, the funding mechanism that puts a burden on uh, young active duty service members who are getting their first home and also puts a burden on disabled American veterans um, who live in higher cost areas like Charlotte or Atlanta. Um, so we want to look at that too. But my pledge is uh, to work to make sure that we get it right. And, and that, is, that is something I, uh, I believe in sincerely and emotionally. Let me just ask a quick follow-up because my time's almost out. But to get it right... Um, in your opinion, if you get it right, uh, will Joe from Elko be compensated? Well, I, I, yes. I mean, if we get it right, anyone who, who fought, anyone who was exposed and deserves 
attention from us will get it. Um, that is my pledge to work as hard as I can to see that nobody slips through the cracks. But I will say, if if your staff wants to get me uh, any information okay. on Joe, I will I will see to it. He may he may even qualify and not know it. Mr. Secretary, thank you, and again, thanks for coming to Las Vegas. Thank you, appreciate it. Two two things, Senator Heller. First of all, do what he just said about getting him to call VA. Yeah. There may be a way they can help. Good, good. You missed my opening statement. I, I did. But I you did not miss. I apologize. No, you no, you don't need to apologize. <laughs> but you you did not miss the conversation you and I had on the floor two days ago because you were right there. I told this the member, everybody that's here, all the members that were here, the people in the audience here, the VSOs that are here, that the issue of dealing with Blue Water Navy is no longer going to be a question. How we do it is the only question. And I told the secretary and worked with him in various meetings to get us to a position we can do a a vehicle of some description that is a useable, that is unanimously approved by everybody to be assured veterans who deserve a benefit if they've been denied or couldn't get, get it, but that we don't open the door or set a precedent down the road for something else that would run away. So I've talked, I know Sheriff Brown's had conversations with, with uh, some of the members of the committee. I have, uh, Senator Tillis has worked with me on a lot of stuff we've done. I'm talking about this, Senator Bozeman. I've talked to Patty Murray about it. John and I have talked a lot about it. And so, uh, it's not a subject we're not dealing with. And I know there are people in the audience that have very vested interest, including yourself and including your veterans. So we set the table this morning in my opening remarks, and he just affirmed what I said without me coaching him because I'm, he's down there and I'm up here. That he's going to agree to work with us to make that happen. So we're going to do it. And uh, you betcha.